Surprise has already occurred here at WCS Europe as Youth Thermal will take the 2-0 victory, moving on to the winner's match. And in fact, we can take a look at the bracket and to show you exactly how things have gone so far and what's to come. Yeah, it's been a been an interesting and fast start to the day, Kolaris, with that 2-0 in Youth Thermal's favor over Wellmu. And he finds himself in the winner's bracket already, as you can see. They're now confirmed as it's on the graphic, which means if it's on the graphic, it's real. And then Wellmo down in the lower bracket, and we play in the third game of the evening against the loser of our next series. Yep, as we have TLO going up against Livezerg. Let's take a look a bit about Livezerg himself. A guy that originally was on the StarCraft 2 scene in Rock's Kiss. Now he's on Vega Squadron. Did very well last season to kind of make a name for himself. You know, that second point uh, describes him perfectly. A risk taker. He's known for his aggressive all or nothing strategies. That's how he's been able to get a lot of wins recently. He's well known in the professional scene of all the other pros that play against him um, on the ladder or in online cups. He's aggressive. He's going to do it all in most likely. So <laughs> you've got to be careful against live Zerg. And he's not too bad in Zerg versus Zerg either. This guy has potential to be another dangerous opponent like he was last season. And then, of course, we have our second player of this game, uh, Mr. Dario Wunsch, TLO, who had such a good 2013, really kind of pushed himself to the limits and yeah. just kind of didn't get that extra little footing he needed. Yeah, I mean, TLO, interestingly enough, doesn't really perform super well in WCS Premier Leagues. Interestingly, because he's actually a player who's always contending for maybe a BlizzCon spot. He got fifth in the very first WCS season, a fantastic result which kicked off WCS Europe. But then he went to two back-to-back -back round of 32 last place finishes. Mm. This year, he started with a top 16 and last season round of 32 again. He spent three out of the six seasons that he's played WCS losing in the first group stage. And that's kind of a little bit mind-blowing when you come to think of TLO is such a good player. So is he going to have that happen again today? He had to play in Challenger because he lost in the round of 32 last season. He was able to scrape through that, winning three games in a row. But here he is again in another important season for him. And very similar to last year, the performance this season could push him to BlizzCon potentially. He needs at least a top four finish this season to be looking at a top 16 overall placement. Yeah, and that's a very important for him. I mean, what we've seen from TLO, he does not want to be going out in the round of 32 again. Even in the past seasons, that was just not where he wanted to be at all. That's not what TLO expects of himself. He's on right. a team as illustrious now, I would say, as Liquid, who has Snoot, who unfortunately for him didn't quite clinch it here, but has been doing good elsewhere. And then Bunny as well, propelling himself forwards. Yeah. TLO taking third spot behind them as best non-Koreans in that team. I, I think he'll want to fight for it. So anyway, let's get into game number one now as we have Overgrowth, our first map between these two Zergs. And spawning down to the bottom left-hand corner are Blue Zerg representing Team Liquid. It is Liquid TLO. And up to the top right-hand corner, we have our Red Zerg representing Vega Squadron. It's Live Zerg. Yeah, Lives are definitely capable of some tricks in this series. So I want to be following closely what he's up to in the majority of these games here. And Zerg versus Zerg, I've been playing a lot of Zerg recently, so I'm actually rather interested in seeing how this plays out. Mm -hmm. um, you don't really see Mutalist that often in this matchup. You know, it's more commonly Roaches, as you can see. TLO, though, in, in recent times, has favored purely gasless styles. So no gas taken at all, using queens for your defense, making that wall with the evolution chambers and the roach warrants, and then exploding with your gas and pushing yourself to either a Ling style or a roach style, depending on how you want to play the mid part of Zerg versus Zerg out. But Live Zerg has always, for me, been a player who, I actually, I remember playing against Live Zerg back in 2010, 2011 in, in silly ago. online cups. And yeah. he's always been the same kind of player, just super aggressive. Um, you know, loves his Ling bailing games. And if he can win in that way, he'll win in that way. Um, and, you know, he's not afraid to be that kind of aggressive, aggressive guy. Well, no, for sure, TLO is going to have to be careful. And sometimes if you do open the, those gals and your defense isn't exactly on point, you can get punished by that yeah. kind of aggressive play. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different types of all-ins that can come off, uh, you know, a, a player like Livesick into a gasless style here if the defense isn't put up properly. But TLO playing a little bit more cautious here. As you can see, he's going to spawn and pull 
into the hatch. Whereas Livezerg has got a hatch spawn in port. Playing against his image here, which has gained him an edge in the starting build orders as Tilo has played a little bit safer in case we were to see some form of aggression early. And it would be Livezerg the first person to take gas as well. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So uh, there are a lot of options that open up here for Livezerg. TLO on the other side of things without any gases is just going to be powering up his mineral mm. mineral uh, bank and then yep. from there on out just exploding. As Seems like he before. is going to play gasless uh, yeah. completely. TLO is going to spot the uh, hatchery here and he immediately turns to the main base. He's looking to see if he can get a gas scout to know if he's playing against gasless himself, uh, the same what he's doing or if there's even a gas before the spawning pool here. So he'll go in and luckily for him, the gas is actually on the closer side more so than the further away side. So mm. he's actually gonna definitely go in, definitely see the gas and definitely know that he could be facing a bit of aggression shortly once the gas has been gathered up. Yeah, I'm quite surprised that that is the case with the gas positioning, but at mm. the same time, I think the overlord can still get over to that one on the right hand side and then get yeah, out yeah, anyway. Okay. So. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a minor thing here as TLO now actually grabbing the gas just a little bit later. Actually yeah, quite a, a single, lot later. Yeah, a single one gas here. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's interesting. It's not, it's okay. It's actually, it is not, it's not like a gas style, but you know, with a gas style, you usually end up taking two gases to around the five to 5.30 minute mark, but you've taken a single gas here at this point, which gives you a little bit faster zergling speed. But at the same time, it does at the end of the day come to similar positions. Um, with what you are trying to get towards with your gas income. And TLO seen pretty much everything his opponent's doing, but he he's hasn't. Blocking the gas. Yeah, he's, he hasn't seen, uh, Livezerk hasn't seen what his opponent's doing because of his opener. You yeah. know, you can't go in with an Overlord when your opponent's gone right. spawning pool first. So, so this does look like TLO is playing gasless right now. Lots of queens, deny, and so it is very tricky, but TLO has gone for a fast layer here. Uh, usually when you go for such a fast layer, you kind of combine it with a Roach Warren to get fast Roach speed. Uh, and you can be really aggressive uh, with that kind of style with getting Roach Speed out early, but that's a potential here for TLO. But look at that, 20 links from Livezerg, 24. Yeah. Baneling Nest coming in, just Livezerg all over. This yeah. is him. Going for the push, going for the and break. there's no Baneling Nest, remember, from TLO. There's no Spine from TLO. And right now, TLO has not scouted anything. The two links he's going to scout with are going to run into these links. And I don't think Tilo's gonna hold this. No. I mean, he doesn't even have. Well, like he's mean, gonna be like, doo, doo, doo. oh my god, Livezerg, I knew you'd do this, you son of a. Yeah, I and mean, there's nothing, there's not a whole lot for Tilo to really. I mean, doesn't have speed. Roach Warren needs to complete for yeah. some, some kind of defense. But the wall's gonna die before the, the, the Roaches even come into play. A spine yeah. call is too late in this game. And just slim, simply Links are gonna win this. Yeah, I mean, you don't even need to morph the Bailings, to be honest. You break the wall down. Yeah, they can nibble away at this all day long. Even going actually for the Roach Warren here. So, Roaches need to start right now otherwise they're not going to be get made right. anytime soon he's only got four on the way right now it's going to end up falling here come the bailings as well to break through can tilo hold it's going to be close he's got the queens in good positions already in between the buildings but at the same time the bailings actually do a big big chunk of damage there and that's a lot of zerglings flooding on through how many units does he even have to defend against this not, really not a lot that many. Right now. and even the roaches that pop out are going to be in trouble spying does complete though and the drones are in hold position which are giving a bit of defense towards these roaches which pop Overall, that wasn't terrible in terms of the defense. These roaches should be enough to be able to clean up these zerglings, but it's the extra zerglings now that he has to deal with. Yeah, just complete the wall, off. though. He nice. Complete the wall. Very, very quick reaction there to complete that wall off. Very, very important. Those zerglings now morphing into banelings. TLO does see the banelings at the front. Uh, Livezerk has to keep going for this, obviously. Yeah, uh, you oh can't yeah. just go back to drones. There's 1-1 one, one roach upgrades coming in. But with four roaches, uh, a queen still alive with a transfuse, bear in mind. I I'm actually... And six more roaches! Yeah, I think he had to cancel those upgrades. I don't think they were ever going to get done with how low those evolution chambers are, as they were always going to end up dying. Then one falls, but okay. All the banelings are now gone. It's only links though to compete against the rushes and links that we're seeing here from CLO. He's keeping his queen nice and nestled in this back position, but can these zerglings break through? There's a few more rushes on the way. Five, six more rushes. Roach speed. The walls completed off again. Very, very good reactions. Overall, that queen's still alive at the natural as well. If that wanted to, if it could you know, transfuse or kind of just throw down any, any lava he can't break the wall well. anymore. He's not going to break that wall. Yeah. He just has nothing to do it. I mean, there's no banelings. He would need the extra time to morph them in. But by that time, there's look how many roaches are here. Teal is making the hold now. He's got he's you know doubling the roaches every hold that he makes. Very, very good decision making here by Teal so close. far. Very close. Yeah, nail biting hold there for Teal. Very close. Four evolution chambers are going to be the fort. Here yeah. come the banelings. 
but I mean... Look at Teal's Roach Wall behind that too. Yeah, it's just positioned perfectly. So even if these links would yeah. want to get this around, they can't. Well GG, TLO takes game number one. Fantastic hold by him. Well done, TLO. And, uh, you know, that's very much of what we kind of expected from both players. One super aggressive, one kind of playing a little bit more defensive. And TLO manages to make the hold there from what you, you know, think about when TLO first saw the two links come down. Or oh, the first two links went up, and then he saw the flood of links. He didn't even have a wall, a spine, or roach one completed. All he had was the queens that he had built initially. Good hold from Tilo. Um, I, I have to ask Sean if if we'd have seen Livezo get in with his initial two links and see the gas, particular timing of Tilo. Do you think he would have gone for something still as aggressive? Yeah, yeah probably. He was just throwing caution to when he was going to be going yeah, for that anyway. He was going for that anyway. Uh, the, the bigger question, I think, is what happens if he didn't morph those Bailings at the start? And what just if it was links? just Lings? Hmm. Because then, I mean, the Bailings didn't add that much when they burst through. And I think he could have brought... Because when you morph Bailings like that, you are keeping Lings away from the yeah. attacking the wall. So I think that could have maybe been a different scenario. It's, it's actually something you'd need to play out there more so than kind of think about it. But either way, um, at the end of the day, Tilo with a, uh, with a pretty good hold there. And he is able to pick up game number one and now just be a single game away from moving forward. Yeah, really, really well done there. The second map is going to be Overgrowth uh, between these two. Live Zerg now has to kind of find a way through, and I think it will be a case of him trying to find a way through because he'll probably be aggressive again. Well, Overgrowth, uh, this next new map now. Wait, we're in, wait, that was just on Overgrowth. <laughs> that was just on Overgrowth. I don't know why. Uh, overgrowth? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. We actually uh -huh. learned, so, so I'm, I'm looking like, at I'm like, all right, so overgrowth again. I'm like... I said that in my head, and I was like, is this correct? <laughs> I'll just go with it because we're in the yeah, lobby. So a slight uh, mistake there with the yeah. hosting. So depending on the next map, um, is it a two-player map? Is it a three? Is it the four? Uh, can actually, you know, I was going to talk a bit about if it was overgrowth again, you know, the, the potential of the, the two base attacks like we saw on overgrowth, as wow. weird as that sounds. Wow. <laughs> um, which map is it? Deadwing. Okay, so Deadwing is interesting because Deadwing is big, mm -hmm. but also doesn't have ramps to protect the natural. Um, you know, I guess neither does Overgrowth there as well, but some maps you do have that ramp to help protect these two base attacks. This map, though, because of its size, it's hard to be aggressive with Link Bay Link yeah. on here. So um, I'd be expecting maybe Livezo to play slightly less aggressive. Okay, well, uh, I think also it depends on the spawns, right? This one isn't the cross forced that's no, on no, no. it's anywhere yeah yeah anywhere. so so it depends like where you're sending your overlords initially as well to kind of get good scouts on your opponent and yeah. stuff like that this makes that. just for a very good roach only kind of map mm. three bases easily to take because it's all on the same ground fourth base is just down the lower part and you can take that quite easily yeah. so the, the most deserves that i've played have always kind of been roach only style here gasless build a wall with evolution chambers, go for roaches a lot, and play that kind of style. All right. I don't know. Well, it looks like everyone's in, uh, so I assume we can go in just a second for Livezerg and TLO. Um, but I think going into this group, the way in which we saw like Livezerg perform in the past during WCS Europe, I kind of gave Livezerg a chance to get out of this group. That's the thing that makes this group very, very interesting, is that I think ultimately all four players have a shot of actually advancing through. I can't yeah. really determine in my head exactly what's going to happen. And it was epitomized by the fact that Uthermal took that first series. Right. And showing that he is a contestant, a contestant with the likes of people like Welmu. So I think it's a really, really cool group. Yeah, I, I think anyone has the chance to go through. Like you said, that's one of the, the best parts about this group. The, there's no clear favorite. Yeah. Uh, there's no complete underdog. Everyone's kind of similar in skill. And that kind of makes for an interesting group. I mean, it depends on what you're looking for, uh, really, when you're looking at a group. Do you want to see a guy dominate and go through in first place? Do you want to have no idea who's going to go through? Do you want to see that underdog climb up? So it depends on what you're looking for. But a lot of people do find this group interesting because it's so open. Yeah. All right. Well, we're getting loaded up now into game number two between these two guys. This is TLO. Very, very strong resilience there. It's uh, very obvious that he has to deal with these things quite a lot and has the crisis management capable of dealing with it. So now does Livezerg say, all right, well, you dealt with that really well. Uh, I'll try something different. Let's get into it. Game number two, as we have spawning up to the top left-hand corner on Deadwing. It is our blue Protoss representing Team Liquid. It's TLO. And down to the bottom right-hand corner, we have our red 
Zerg. Did I say Protoss before? I don't know. Uh, our Red Zerg, <laughs> representing Vega Squadron, it's Live Zerg. Live Zerg. I swear I just said Protoss. Hmm. I. Anyway. Cannot tell. You, you phased out just as I did. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Sorry. I it's should okay. have been listening. It's okay, man. It's okay. I don't usually have to listen to be like, did, did, did I make a mistake did, in the intro? Like, do uh, cars. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> okay. So, hatch first, very common here. I definitely hatch first here. Mm -hmm. This map's, it's so big that if you were to go for a early pool, like a nine, 10, something, um, it's such a way to get over to your opponent. They probably already have, a, you know, the hatchery finish and the spawning pool finish by the time you get there. <laughs> it, it, it's so big. So it's a very obviously very difficult to pull off aggression here. So I'd be expecting hatch first by both. I wonder if anyone wants to go hatch and then gas, then pool to open up potential aggression, but not early aggression. Uh, and also to kind of control the game a little bit more. And if anyone's too greedy, you can easily punish. So does anyone want to take a drone then a gas? Anyone? Drone. Gas? Anyone? Anyone? A anyone interested? Zerg. Anyone interested? Drone. No, and that's a 16 drone too. So that's yeah. actually a, a bit of a even greedier um, or slightly greedier variation compared to Tilo. Yeah, Tilo's so, playing the defensive game. I would imagine that, I mean, it's. I'm guessing now, uh, more so than trying to figure it out, that we don't, we don't see gas at all. From you, either? No, I think if you're gonna take gas, you could even just get you like the gas then pull. Mm -hmm. More so than just taking it now. <laughs> On a map this big, you don't need to worry about being super aggressive. We are going to see a gas from Livezerk, so my gas was incorrect for him. We'll see about TLO, though. Yeah, I think TLO can get away with it from uh, judging how we saw his previous game. Mm. Also, you know, if as long as you've got your creep spread uh, in the right place here down towards that opening towards your natural, you can build good right. walls there as well. So that's all right. Um, Cross position here too is kind of annoying because they don't know if they're about to be attacked at all. Even yeah. though it's less likely to happen, it still could. Um, less likely, you know, doesn't mean that it's impossible. <clears throat> I wonder, uh, yeah, two links is good. I was gonna say, I wonder how many links. You build two just to scout. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason to get these. You've got to try and figure out if you're playing against Gasless or not. Because if, for example, if Live Zerg knew that he was playing against Gasless right now, he'd get Zergling speed, I'd imagine, and then just go take a third. Yeah. And because of the directions that they've spawned and the fact that the second overlords are always going cross positions anyway, he'll both players can spot these two links pretty early on. And if they want to prepare for mm. a block on their ramp. Right. Yeah, it's important not to give away free information like this. Yeah. I mean, TLO got another two links as well, actually. Uh... A second pair. Yeah, just safety. Hmm. He's got no scouting at all. He's got no gas. He does take his double gases now at five. And hopefully, already going to, down there. Uh, try and get some damage dealt. Not a lot of damage dealt on these links, but hopefully these double queens can get the full block. Nice move by Tilo. Uh, oh, uh, he lets one in. Is there a queen in the main out yet? No. It walked down. It walked yeah, all the I, way down. The new one though, seconds away. Oh yeah, the new one. Yeah. No, you're and right. he gets a full scout here. So TLO likewise scouting, by the way. So he actually, both of them have scouted each other. Yeah. What is Lives going to do? He's already mined more, uh, 100 extra gas. What's what is it 100 for? It? Is it for a layer? Does he want to throw down the bailing nest? Does he want to go roach bailing? I mean, he has plenty of options available to him. I, it's got to be something aggressive. I mean, he's got he's droning, 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 yes. But where is all this gas going? I mean, it could be a high... Uh, a, well, he could just throw a double evolution chamber down. Yeah. Yeah, he could. Yeah. We'll uh, see. There's one at the front already. And... Tilo's like, okay, he's taking a third. So Tilo is saying, okay, he's playing the right response to my style, which is late gas. Yeah. <laughs> Take your early third because mine's not going to be as fast usually here. But we are going to see double evolution chamber from Tilo. And it's Lings. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Cool. Coolie, 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 coolie. That All is right, interesting. Links. All right, Links. Well, uh, he's only got enough gas for the attack upgrade, by the way. Not enough for the carapace, but he's taking a pretty fast third of his own, though. Yeah. And I wonder, where is the Roach Warrant? Okay, is that a Roach Warrant? Yeah. Roach Warrant's in for Livesick. Ooh, 10 Links on the way to try and maybe put a little bit of pressure on, but I don't think he can get a huge amount done against these Links and Queens if they... No, Livesick's not going to get anything done with these Links. I uh, Well, there's Unless a wall. He... And the, but Tilo, I think, at this point is... 
I don't think he's going to be overly greedy. He's going to be building around Ling. He's going to be building Ling's for his plus one attack to finish, right? Yeah. To try to get a cancel on a potential greedy live Zerg, who's meant to be playing greedy in this style because Tilo shouldn't really have that many ways to be aggressive. So he's, yeah, look, there's a lot of links from Tilo. Yeah, These links from live Zerg won't do anything. And to be honest, Tilo could even get a cancel on his third on his opponent's yeah, third. Yeah, when the counter comes. I mean, he's actually, yeah. he, he spread those units so well on the top of the ramp as well to... Yeah, and Lives is like, holy, yeah. holy moly. They won't reveal them until the very last second. And by the time they're revealed, you're right in their face. So yeah. that was a uh, very, very well tactically done there by TLO. And now that's a big flood of lings yeah. he has equally. And it's, you know, right now, Lives are cast to defend his, his third. He's got roaches on the way. He's making a bit of a wall so the lings don't run around. But if he takes damage now, he will be behind in this game very easily, very simply. Tilo's economy is going to flood after this. That's a lot of lings. 36 to 15 right now with those uh, roaches about to pop for lives though, but they're in the main and they're in the natural. They're not anywhere near this location as the lings now start doing their work. No works have been killed so far. It's just units, units. Um, and there are still quite a few lings left over, but the roaches and queens should be able to clean them up. Good drone micro there in the mineral lines as well to keep those alive. That was me clapping to Livezerg's defense. A beautiful defense there. Very, very well done. Very Again. nice. Especially since he lost no drones. Yeah, the, the <laughs> Ling upgrades weren't complete during that attack, by the way. Uh, and that was a beautiful defense. And now Livezerg's got a better economy by 10 drones or so. He's got the gases on his third down already compared to Tilo, who has not. And he's got the better upgrades already because he focused on Roaches straight away. Look at these Lings trying to get that queen. They oh, do get that? it. That was all right. At the yeah. sacrifice of all the lings, but getting a queen is not too bad at all. Even gets in, looks for the scout. Oh, oh. oh if he got in the main base, he'd see that it was just uh, five gases, not six. That can yeah. be a little bit um, eluding there. And there's already an overseer having scattered out quite a lot of the base in its entirety here over across at TLO's base. So for now, Livezerg has a good idea of what's going on. But look at this, it's just been roaches, roaches, roaches yeah. for quite a while. And Livezerg, I would imagine at this point, isn't going to do anything too crazy. I would say that he just kind of tries to build towards 200 supply uh, and then kind of use his economy advantage and his upgrade advantage for a 200 supply fight. I don't think he would go too crazy uh, before that, but just rush towards 200 supply here. Yeah, three overlords coming in. I think he's going to do that. Yeah. Maybe take a fourth while doing it too. You can spare 300 minerals usually. Or if you just want to try and uh, max out fast. At least his weapons upgrades uh, really, really quick as well. He's already started on his plus two whilst TLO's back and his plus one. Yeah, the links didn't do enough for him, unfortunately. Yeah, because uh, and those upgrades now, where what are they really doing, right? Yeah. Not a whole lot at all. Infestation pit coming in for both players here. Interesting though, not Hydralis Den and they're not focusing on pure army, uh, which could even lead towards uh, Hydralis or Borrow Roaches and stuff like that. It's actually uh, Infestors. Interestingly enough, coming out from TLO, both of them getting detection, by the way, in case there were to be bud roaches, yep. uh, spores. Very important on this map. And actually, I mean, well, very important in this matchup in general, but not only that, one spore crawler at the front of these three bases, unless your opponent's going around the back rocks, can defend a huge, huge chunk of area. So yep. that's really, it's really a really a good uh, boon of this map. So Roach Infester, interesting. Um, the fourth bases from both should come in soon. Um, with Roach Infester here, it's gonna be in, it's gonna all come down to the engagement because it just comes down to the fungal growth. Because the the, the infestors are so important with the what they land. Hmm. But yeah, Livezig's rushing to 200 supply here. This will be his timing to attack because it also is roughly when plus two attack completes, as you can see. Yeah, it's uh, very, very 20 close. seconds and. You know, he's not that far away from 200 supply and also adding in three infestors. Uh, and this fourth base was spotted as well by a few oh, links. Look at Tilo. Going down there. Four, four spines. He's a little bit scared. Well, he knows that he's a yeah. little bit behind at this point and an attack could uh, do a lot of damage. He's also getting Borrow too. It's, it's, it's going to be quite nice for his infestors. It's amazing how much of a difference, like that gas investment into, say, melee upgrades Ooh. and that poke forwards really didn't do much. And Livezerg, a big switch here to potential Ultralisks. Melee upgrades coming in as his plus two attack completes and oh, then wow. the hive starts. Very so cool. So Infestor, Roach, uh, Ultralisk potentially hit. Nice little move for the TLO on the left-hand side, but it has already been spotted by Overlords, so it should be pushed away. Yeah, it looks like TLO and Livezerg are on similar... Um, Wavelengths here, they're both in the spines, they're both protecting the full bases, and they're both going to Hive. And mm. I wonder if Tilo starts his uh, plus two melee. Remember, he got that plus one melee early on, so he's actually yeah. going to have even better 
um, Ooh, units. But the Spire goes down for him overall. So interesting choice here. Roach versus Roach battle down to the bottom right. Uh, Live Zerg does have plus two weapons over this army. So he should be able to clean up in the end. And TLO, Broodlords? I guess so. Yeah. If he buys the time for them, that's cool, going to be important for Livesay to try to find that Spire. It's 54 uh, Roaches against 32. I mean, yeah. six Infestors against three if the well, Fumbles that's, that's good. That's good for TLO because if they're not attacking, you don't need the extra 20 <laughs> that's true. Roaches, right? But what if he does attack? He's got Spines and Infestors. Yeah, I guess they can lock down. Um, Ultras Cavern coming in. And the Safety Spire too. I think that we're going to see Livesig focus on Ultralis and then Corruptors if he needs to against uh, the Greatest Spy. But neither of them have actually spotted the Hive yet, which is the interesting part of all this. Teal is going to make the first move. Yep, spots that. And he does spot the Hive. So And three Changelings to try and have a bigger scout. So he needs to know Ultralis or not. And he spots the Ultralis Cavern here. That's a big and scout. And the Spire. So he knows both. Um, Hydralis then coming in from Teal 2. Vipers coming out here from Livesig. Oh, wow. Fungal, Vipers... Ultralisks, a big combination, but does he have bro brutal protection? Already big switch ups here uh, through this is, yeah, uh, you know, it's it's rare. You actually get to see Zerg versus Zerg really evolve mm. further than that mid game stage that it gets so stagnated in. Tilo did attempt Boro Roaches to the fourth, but got denied immediately. And he's going to go home here. But the big question mark here, I think that Live Zerg's army is amazing if there weren't Broodlords, but they're going to be. And I'm not sure he's got enough Broodlords. I mean, uh, not enough Broodlords, enough Anti-Air, sorry, for the Broodlords. Uh, he has there is no <laughs> he, he has the Vipers to pull, but there's no Hydra Den, and there's no Corruptors, and he can't build Corruptors because he's maxed out because yeah. of all those Roaches. He needs to sacrifice Roaches off somewhere. He needs to go for a little bit of a push or try and harass anything to bleed off some units because he's getting weapons upgrades, and he has Gas Bank yeah. for some Anti-Air. And TLO adding in eight Hydras. I love it. Mm. Getting the plus three attack. Eight Hydra is going to deal out so much damage because you're not going to be able to touch them. You've got Roaches, Infestors, yeah. and Broodlords. It's going to be difficult. Very, and very Lives difficult. And just he knows about the Spire, but he doesn't know about the Greater Spire. So it, to him, it could be the same type of Spire that he has in case there are Broodlords. Yeah. yeah. He can build Corruptors then. So I think that he will build Corruptors once he knows the Broodlords are definitely here, but he's going to lose a fight before that happens, and he may lose too much. And Lives are poking out into the middle of the map, just holding on the side edge of creep, and... One Roche did spot the fifth base up to this top left, so he could actually go around there and yeah. deny that, which is a nice start for him, but he still has no idea about the Broodlords. No, and Steel actually gets Lings into the main base, funny enough. Oh, he does know about the Broodlords. Look, he's got little late changelings here spotting them. Okay. So, but he's not doing anything. Well, he's got to use, uh, got to use his mobility then. Yeah. He's uh, Teal is going to push with spores and spines here onto his opponent's creep, and it looks like Live Zerg's going to ring around and pick off the fifth. This is a nice little move with a static defense as well to be able to help out this. Whoa, fungals everywhere. Oh, and he keeps chaining them as well. There's a few pulls on top of the infestors to kill those off. A few infested Terrans as well rain down for Livesurg, but the Broodlords with the fungals in tandem with one another. The infested Terrans now trying to work on these Broodlords, but the Broodlords micro back if that can actually happen. Oh, Roach is here. Constantly just pushing everywhere. The spine crawlers and spores also pushing with the roaches. Roaches have found the way through to the fourth base. The Broodlaws trying to push them away, and but. 10 Ultralisks. This is crazy. I mean, yeah, you make 10 Ultralisks, but still, there are Broodlords there, Livesurg. You've got to be kind of worried about those. They're not doing enough damage, though, to. Oh, they're eventually going to pull back the Roaches, but the Roaches are going to get this base. Likewise, though, TLO has already got this base on the left hand side. crippling his opponent's economy and income. And the spines are helping out considerably, actually. Uh, overall, I mean, with this static defense here, it's very, very difficult for Livesurg to really mount some kind of attack on this. He's just killed off hatchery after hatchery. This one's going to fall down here as well. This one Ultralis is doing nothing. And the roaches have all died off on the other side of the map. Well, Teal's picked off almost every hatchery. And he's going to grab this last one here, hopefully. Uh, the main base is not as important. Broodlords against Ultralisks. Something tells me one army's going to win. There's no gas for yeah. Livesurg, and he's got no income. So what is he meant to build for anti-air? GG, TLO, wow. That was a weird, weird way for that to, it was very, you know, all over the place yeah. with the armies that they're building, but then the way that it ended was just like. It was pretty much impossible to observe all of those things going on at the same time, but uh, that 
That's how that happened. That was very, very yeah. weird. I really wasn't expecting the Zerg versus Zerg to go quite how that went. I was yeah. expecting, well, okay, Roach is I mean, cool. There, there's but... so much to talk about and so much to look at in finer detail, but it's just all happening so fast. It is hard to do so, but an interesting game there. But it is TLO who advances through to the next game. And that is, of course, going to be the winner's one as our fourth game. And that's good for him. He'll be playing up against you, Thermal, to decide who's first place. But our next game coming up, then, is now going to be Wellmu versus Livezerg. So mm. we have Wellmu, who is looking a little bit weaker today. He's looking vulnerable. And he could get knocked out and, for the first time this year, get eliminated in the round of 32. He's in the previous two seasons this year, he's at top eight, top eight. Livezerg could do that to him. Yep, he could. That being said, though, Wellmu's always looked good in this matchup. You know, 10-4 in WCS uh, across the entirety of the two seas uh, of the two years that the WCS system has been here. So it's his best matchup statistically. But you never know with how he's looking at the moment. All right, well, that's going to be a cool series for sure. Yeah. All right, jo join us after break, guys, when we have our losers match. One of these players is going home as it is Wellmu going up against Livezerg.